up on the side side. Kilo Alpha 46, Pooh Bear Hamel by 297. Hey, we got you in, Robbie. Hello, welcome back to Fred in the Shed and the first of a new series of videos. Whether you're completely new to CB radio and you haven't got a clue or maybe you were an old breaker back in the day and you've come back and you've found it all a little bit daunting. Over these videos, I'm gonna try to explain the things that I've learnt myself on radio and hopefully help you set up a practical, usable, not too expensive, CB station. Before we get right stuck into these videos, let's have a disclaimer. All of the, I'm gonna show you, all of the advice and opinions are completely mine. I've based this over the seven or eight years that I've been back on radio and mostly on the mistakes that I made. I am not a ham radio operator. I have never taken an exam. I'm not qualified to advise you on radios. Some of the radios that you will see on the Fred in the Shed uh, videos are not type approved to use in the UK and we'll come to that on a later video. But you must understand this is just me giving you my opinion, hopefully to help you out. Along with newbies, starting on CB, there will be a lot of radio people that are subscribed to Fred in the Shed and you'll be watching this video right now. So now I'm talking to you guys. If you feel there's anything that I've missed or skipped over or lacked detail, if there is any equipment that you would like to recommend which you feel would help new people, be it a radio, antenna, or anything else in the future, please, please, please get involved. Leave that down in the comments. Because these videos, I intend to leave these on my channel for many years to come. So your input, your comments, will help people who are coming back to the hobby. Right, right, right. Let's get straight into it. So on this video, I want to talk about expectations, either you're coming back to CB or starting from scratch. We'll talk about the pros and cons of going mobile or setting up a home-based station. And then finally, we'll talk about mobile and home-based antennas and your options there. Let's get going. A common comment that I get on my CB radio videos are people's disappointment when they very first set up a CB radio station, normally home-based. The disappointment is they spend all this money and then they're unable to get contacts. It's, they feel it's completely dead and it's been a complete waste of time and of course money. You see, I thought like perhaps a lot of you guys watching now that were back on in the day, it would be a simple case of buying a new CB radio, putting a loft antenna up and it would just be like the mid 80s. There would be lots of people on channel I'd be straight back into it. In fact, I watched other people's YouTube videos and it always showed the channels really, really busy, lots and lots of chat, like my YouTube videos will show you that. The reality was completely different. There are people on radio, but now people are spread out over a greater distance. In some ways that's good because we're not all jumbled together trying to key over each other, but it does mean there is a lot of dead time on radio. People tend to meet up in groups and in nets. Everyone's got that little bit older, we've got jobs, family commitments, so people tend to come on for an hour here and there, maybe a couple of hours in the morning, perhaps in the evening. Just meet up for a regular group and a regular chat and really it would pay you before you even clicked and bought anything, it would pay you to do a little bit of research on multimedia and see if you can find out where those groups are. My suggestion is you check out some CB radio forums. Now two spring to mind that I've used, that is the Charlie Tango forum and also Transmission One. There's also Yahoo and Facebook groups, there's probably WhatsApp groups as well. I'd go and check a few of those out. You may have to register and join, you, you may not. And quite simply, just put out a thread. It would be like me saying, Hi, I'm Fred. I live in St Albans, Hertfordshire. I'm thinking of coming back to CB Radio. Is there anyone on in my if area? If there's not a group already going, someone will say, Well, I'm just down the road from you. I'm about six or seven miles down the road from you. I can e would easily get you on a standard radio. Yeah, let me know when you're back on CB and we'll arrange a time and a channel and I'll give you a radio report. And that's what I wished I did when I started. Instead of just sitting here flicking aimlessly round the channels, 
searching for a contact. I wished I'd done my research. And if you can get or you can find a group of people which you know about before you set up, you're halfway there. The next thing you need to think about is whether you're going to set up a home base station or you're going to put this in your car if you've got one and you're going to go mobile. Both have their pros and cons. You've got more chance of getting contacts if you put a radio in a car and go mobile because if you're hearing stations or breakers you can move to a better location and try and make contact with them. Also, if you go mobile, it will be cheaper, generally, to set up your CB radio. You won't have to buy a power supply, for example. The mobile antenna is most likely to be cheaper than putting up a large home-based antenna. And noise-wise, now this is a problem with home-based home bases. We get a lot of noise, a lot of man-made interference. Again, some people, it is, it is a, a no-go. They just get so much noise at home. If you've got a CB radio in your car, you can drive somewhere quiet. You can park up on a bit of high ground where there'll be no noise. Downsides is, of course, it's the inconvenience, isn't it? It's having to um, set up a radio in the car, li literally go outside, drive your car, use your petrol or diesel or electric nowadays, and find somewhere to operate it. It's far more convenient, far more comfortable coming from work coming from the shops switch on your cb radio have a flick round and have a chat disadvantages of a home base setup uh, first one is going to be the cost you're going to want to use if you can an, an outside home based antenna so you're going to have to buy poles and brackets it's best if you could attach that to the side of your house you don't have to start that way i didn't start that way we'll discuss that in a later video when we talk about home base antennas but you could set one up just if you've got a piece of garden or a yard or something you can set one up on a pole or you can use a temporary antenna like an extendable pole and a T2LT future videos the main problem you're going to have in a home base setup is going to be noise as I said lots of man-made noise nowadays um, solar panels LED garden lights cheap Chinese power supplies absolutely everywhere so you're going to have to deal with a degree of noise and that will limit the amount of stations that you can receive certainly your distance stations might you might lose those in the noise by putting up a large 18 foot home based antenna your transmit range in general terms will be further than you can get on a mobile set setup and also like the receive you should in theory receive more stations you might want the best of both worlds you might want to set up a CB radio at home, buy yourself a cheap mobile antenna, sling it in the car at the weekend, go up to the high grounds. And that's probably the best way to do it. Now, I say antenna, everything comes back to your antenna. Before you even look at purchasing a CB radio, be it an AM, FM rig or a sideband rig, the most, most important thing is antenna, antenna, antenna. Let's talk about mobile antennas. For the sake of illustration on this video, I'm going to be using pictures from the Thunderpole CB Online web shop. Now, I'm not associated with Thunderpole, I'm not sponsored by them. I have used them in the past and I have found them very reliable. The first thing you need to consider is how you're going to attach the CB antenna to your car. The most common type used is a mag mount. This uses a large, powerful magnet to attach the antenna. To the roof of your car but you've got to be a bit more careful nowadays because a lot of manufacturers use a lightweight material such as aluminium or aluminium or a composite like a plastic to save weight so you need to check whether your car has a steel roof before you go ahead and buy a mag mount if you're really unable to use a mag mount, there are other alternatives. Most popular are gutter mounts. In general terms, these are used on pickups, trucks and Land Rovers, but there's no reason why you couldn't carefully fit one to your car. In general terms, the longer the antenna, the better your range will be. I would try and avoid small antennas. I would stick to medium or large antennas. You need to consider at this stage whether you're planning to drive around and use the radio mobile or are you more likely to drive to a high place and use it while you are static square wheeled. 
if you are going to be parked up, I would say go straight to the large antennas. At the bottom of the range, the Thunderpole Voyager and also the Thunderpole Red Devil are great antennas. I've had copies of people using these and they work very well for the money. Another two antennas that are popular and I've heard people use are the Serio 4000 and the Serio 5000. These work really, really well and people do drive about with these attached to their cars. The last kind of large mobile antennas that people use are what we call the springies. You generally see these on trucks and vans. They're very, very basic and they can take a knock if you're going to use them mobile. If you are going to drive around, you might feel more comfortable with a shorter antenna below one meter in length. I myself have one of these Thunderpole Atoms. They work exceptionally well. And also you can get springies which are less than a meter. Don't forget to add the cost of your mount. Mag mounts, they vary in price and in size depending on the length of whip you want to attach to your car. If you're going to go for one of the larger antennas and you intend to drive around, you might want to consider the more secure triple mounts. Just a quick tip here, learnt from bitter experience with mag mounts. If you intend to take it on and off, I would recommend getting one of these cheap rubber boots because if you slide the magnet at all, it can scratch the paint. Finally, worth a mention is the old tank whip antenna. These are full quarter wave and nine foot in length, so something you probably won't drive around with on your car. But once static, these can perform exceptionally well, especially if you want to go hunting DX. Let's now talk about base antennas. Now, there's no getting away from it. A base antenna is quite a big thing. Whether you go for half wave or you go for five eighth wave, typically the smaller ones are just over four meters in length and the larger ones come in at just over six meters in length. They do do compact base antennas. The Escalibur is quite popular. I'll be honest with you. Um, I think you're gonna let yourself in for disappointment in buying one of these, unless it's your only resort, you can't put up a large antenna. I would always recommend putting up a full-sized antenna. Base station antenna choice is quite controversial. It's quite personal. I've made videos on it, fiberglass, V, aluminium, things like that. To start out, I would recommend you do what I did, and that is buy a cheap, simple silver rod antenna typically going to cost you UK prices 35 to 45 pounds they are basic but they've been around for donkey's years and they work surprisingly well and it's all you need to get started next you're going to need a basic pole to mount your antenna most antennas mount on a one and a half inch to two inch pole you need to check before you buy just google tv mast I would recommend an aluminium pole if you're working on your own. Some people say go for a scaffolding pole, but they are really heavy to handle, especially with an 18 foot antenna on the end. We'll go into the finer points of setting up a base antenna in a future video. If your neighbors are perfectly happy for you to stick an antenna up on the side of your house and you're not gonna get any complaints, then go ahead and order yourself a set of T and K brackets. If you think that's pushing your luck to start with, you can do what I did. I got myself one of these cast iron patio umbrella stands and I stuck a pole into that. Yeah, my antenna, it wasn't as high as it would have been if it's on the side of the house, but it worked surprisingly well. I then bought a second pole and then gradually over a series of months, I got my antenna higher and higher until I took the plunge and I put it on the side of the house and I got no complaints that way. I know from the comments on the videos that uh, a lot of you haven't got permission to put up an antenna. So there are alternatives available that we'll look into in future videos. And some of you are gonna be living in flats and condos and there's no way you can put up an outside antenna. But even so, there are antennas available if you have a balcony or a window ledge that you can use. Right, gonna bring this one to a close now before I completely bore the backsides off of people. I hope this first video gives you an idea of my thoughts behind this series, mostly driven by all of the comments that I get throughout the year on my CB videos, just to help people to get started and just to give them more of an insight to what's going to be needed to set up a CB radio station via home-based or mobile. Looking back over my eight years on radio, 
I think it's mostly very important to get the decisions right at the very beginning. That saves you from potential disappointment and, of course, unnecessary expenditure. What about you guys watching the video? I know there's lots of people with loads of experience watching my videos. Is there anything that you could pass on in the comments? Perhaps you set up a radio CB station. You might have got it right first time. Is there something I've missed? Something you would like to recommend to help people? Or maybe did you make mistakes like I did? And again, could you put those in the comments which will help people not make the same pitfalls. Moving on to the next video when I get time to make it. I tell you what, let's go straight into buying your first CB radio. There's a lot of choice now in 2022. Do you go for a straight legal, UK legal, AM, FM, 80 channel radio? Do you go for a legal sideband radio, maximum of 12 watts? Not a lot of choice, but it is available. Or do you take the plunge? Do you go onto the dark side and do you buy a dark imported radio with a little bit too much power to make it UK legal? Is it worth the risk? That's what we'll discuss on the next video. But as for this one, as always, I do appreciate you sticking with the video. Thanks for your view, Tom. I'm such a small channel, I get so little views. I actually do really appreciate everyone. Just up to me to say now, as always, there's the thumb from Fred in the Shed. Please give it to me down below if you've enjoyed the video, if it's been helpful to you. And as always, stay safe, look after each other, catch you on the next one.